Welcome to the ATP Projects here with your hosts, Matt, Jeff and Steve. G'day guys. Hello. Hey, how are you? Mate, good. Um, but we're going to do a podcast today, a timely one at the beginning of the year for a lot of people that have been a bit festive over the festive season about yeah. detox. And it's cool, Matt, because we were talking, there's a lot of people grumbling. There's a lot of people saying, I'm going to start detox. A lot of people saying, that's crap. There's no need to do it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get into that. But hmm. but before we do, I, I actually wanted to mention um, some feedback, some testimonials that we've had recently hmm. just to get them out of the way, which have hmm. been really, really mind-blowing. Hmm. So... I'll start with mine and then yeah, you yeah, can go yeah, with your one. So, sure, so yeah. um, this one, uh, Tony was actually reading it out today and it's, it's actually, you know, a bit of a tearjerker actually. Yeah. One of the, mm. you know, Brooke, I was getting a bit teary over it and, and it's kind of cool to see when we put products out there that people are using that are that are definitely helping them. Now, it's anecdotal, you know what I mean? This isn't a peer-reviewed study, mm. but take from it what you want. So, um, dementia feedback. ADB products have been amazing for me and changing um, me for the better. And now I have feedback for my father. We started him on multi-food and orum oil, as you had recommended. I thought that it would be a battle with the oil, um, but a teaspoon has solved that. Anyway, um, here's what we have found so far. Uh, Quarter X was having an impact on him and he was sleeping in excess. So with some back and forth, we've been able to uh, work out that if we gave him two after the evening meal before his bed was perfect timing. Mm -hmm. He isn't getting up multiple times throughout the night. His bedtime is normally at 8.45 and an e and, uh, of an evening and he sleeps until 8 o'clock in the morning. He's not slept like that for years. He's waking up refreshed and his skin uh, color is no longer gray. Um, I had time with him before Christmas and I took a photo of my phone and showed him and his response was, oh, look, girl and a boy. So he didn't even recognize himself. He didn't recognize me. My mother commenced with the Orem oil on the evening uh, that it arrived and we also added one multifood. Uh, so th that was obviously before he had started the Orem oil and the multifood. Um, this was only to allow him to understand that it was another nutritional tablet versus a medication because he gets a bit squirrely around medication. Um, well, the next morning after sleeping well, he gets up and makes his bed, gets dressed and toddles out to the kitchen and starts making breakfast. This has not happened in years. Okay, well, maybe this is a, fruit, a fluke, so let's see. We take another uh, multi-food in the morning and then an um, oil for the second, uh, and then an oil and another multi-food in, in the morning, uh, in the evening. The next day, the same thing, except he starts talking to my mother and called her my name. Then he potters into the garden most of the day um, like... Uh, he used to do years before. Uh, then day three, the same as above, he had an episode in the evening where he was aggressive, which ha has been normal, but this time he had a rationalised conversation um, that he was moving out. Uh, this is obviously the disease, but either way, he spoke. Um, on this day, he spoke to me on the phone and he chatted to me like he had always done. Again, this hasn't happened for over two years. When he sees me, he looks at me um, but there was nothing but blankness. Mm. Um, I was over the moon um, for his improvement. Now it continues that he is recognizing basic items around the house and undertaking tasks um, that from a motor school side of things he could not achieve without assistance. He's no longer just sitting in a chair. The phone rings and my mother says after she hangs up, he asks um, them, who was that? Is <laughs> and along the lines of, is that the copper? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Not in a long time have we seen or have we heard this. I hope you don't mind the long-winded email. I just wanted you and the team at ATP, uh, ATP team to know how it has impacted on dementia mm. uh, from Kim. Isn't that good? It's amazing, you know, eh? the, We get those nice things, eh? It's beautiful. I just wanted to share that. The, the thing is, is that, you know, the oily structures of the brain are so important, Matt. And yeah. I know that for... And we just say give it a try for people who have got you know, issues in the brain, whether it be ADHD yeah. or, or dementia or... To know. make sure you're capable of healing. Like a lot of these people yeah. do these high-end biohacking and really high-end medications and treatments. But the basics of making sure you have the essential nutrients to make sure your body's capable of functioning the way it was meant to, you've got to start there. Mm. Otherwise, the other stuff can't possibly work. There's and, a lot and, and look, I just want to say as well too, Steve, we're not making any suggestions of healing claims and all the rest mm. of it. No. But from a nutritional food point of view... Mm. It's the oily structures of the brain that sometimes don't get the nutrients they need, yeah. Matt. I mean, yeah. again, we're just coming back to what used to be in our yeah. diet or what should be in our diet that's yes. missing. And so when you put these nutrients back in, then the body has the, the, mm. the necessary nutrients to be able to actually 
start performing they, as it should. Absolutely. They, th th this could be dementia or it could be something totally different. There, there are a lot of neurological diseases that are deficiencies of vitamins. Yeah. Uh, of course, cough's the classic one where you, you drink a lot of alcohol, B1's diminished and you get demented. You replace yeah. it with B1 it's and fixed. their brain's fixed. Yeah. So there's, there's lots of these diseases that just say, oh, he or she is old, therefore they've got, quote, dementia or Alzheimer's, a basket diagnosis. They may have a nutritional insufficiency and their sure. brain works. Is that Absolutely. that one that you talked about, the locked-in syndrome one time, no, Steve? No, there's another one. That's what, another one. What, and it was just a basic nutrients that they were missing out of their diet. Yeah. What was that one? That, that was um, a lack of dopamine in the brain. Brian and Parkinson's. They made a movie about it. Mm. Yeah, severe Parkinson's. Uh, mm. Lorenzo's Oil? No, no, no. That's no it's called Awakenings. Awakenings. Yeah. Awakenings. It, it had um, right. Robert De Niro and... Um, the funny guy, um, Rob Robin Williams. Robin Williams, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And and they were they were locked in like this. They were statues, mm. and he gave them a, a simple lever doper, which is an amino acid, basically right. to, mm. the precursor to dopamine, yep. and they all came good. Mm. Yep. And lever doper is still used to and, this day. And this is what we come back and saying all the time, man. And again, why we created the four mm. pillars, you know, or the orums, obviously one mm. of those, because these are the the basic nutrients that we need that we find so often yeah. to avoid. And even our other products, you know, you have a look at our formulated herbal products that are trying to drive a testosterone booster and estrogen detoxification again if you have basic deficiencies of essential nutrients they can't even possibly work mm. you know so basically when we're looking at and i always say basic nutrition but it's it's very it's complicated not basic anymore. Mm. but it's just a matter of making sure you've got the things our body needs mm. yeah, it's just like building a car like mm. <laughs> you can push on a throttle but if you don't have any wheels yeah, you yeah. Know, or any petrol you're not going anywhere yeah. so yeah. it's all this synergy together and first of all make sure you've got the infrastructure that makes it capable of working and can i read through one yeah and, and yeah. again just lastly we always say that this information is is information yeah. mm. so talk to well, your healthcare practitioner we, we you know? don't share this much because we're always worried about that we're thinking oh they're just anecdotal reports people aren't going to or we don't want to you know look like we're flogging off all these things or mm. you know uh, like these are we want to help people we don't want people to think they're paid but so we actually don't share a lot of these testimonials but things like this could really help people mm. well I, here's I a loved cool it. one and Let dementia's me... close to my heart because my grandfather had it yeah and, right. and it's one Grandmother of those things as well too where yeah. where I, I wish i had had these tools just yeah. to give them a crack well, you know right. what i mean as yeah. i said there's there's no guarantee but how, what's the worst that can happen you know yeah, exactly so. well that's another good point just making sure there's no interactions especially with the elderly with their list of medications yeah absolutely. otherwise just make sure first do no harm cover the basics and be amazed what can happen when you just make sure the body's got the nutrients it needs to do the job you're asking it to do exactly yeah before you try to force it to happen with a high-end drug yeah and then course. go higher and higher doses you know yep. yeah. yeah here's a cool case study this was one that comes through this one's a nice one personal one uh, let me quickly read it um, finally psoriasis free thanks to atb science gut right i felt the need to share this in hopes i could help others suffering from this skin condition <laughs> I, i'm, I'm eliminating the swear words <laughs> i did not want to post a before shot as i was so self-conscious i never got a photo of that that i kept for about eight years now i had a form of psoriasis that was red spots all over my torso i tried everything all the stuff from the doctors and naturopaths, all the creams, natural steroids, nothing worked. A few months ago, I got really sick and decided I need to really sort my immune system out, and I started taking gut right. You're supposed to do this with a special diet, but to be honest, I couldn't be bothered. Bothered. <laughs> and, I, and I ate as normal, because I do eat pretty healthy anyway. I just started taking it once a day, and within a month, my psoriasis was actually gone um <laughs> cannot believe it i'm just replacing the efforts yeah. um it tastes like drinking dirt but that just reminds me it's the real deal and natural i will take this stuff forever now lol i literally hadn't been in my bikini down the beach for eight years and now you can't keep me away from the beach ah, awesome. thank you atp science and um some nice stuff there now well, it actually says yeah. you're a genius, and I'm going to repeat you know, that. Well, I want to say before that, true. I want to yeah. put this into context. Yeah. But Matt, and he used it to me, was yeah. also he was a failure. No, I was one of the naturopaths, so I was one of these failure naturopaths. So ah. she, what she's gone through and said, she went to all the doctors, she went to the naturopath. When I was, I was her naturopath. Right now, what we did is we tried everything. We did yeah. all the topical, the thieves oil. Mm. We did everything. We mm. made all this stuff. Mm. We we worked with dermatologists. We tried all the products. You know, things labelled called psoriasis. Things that come with all this education. I went and did all these different courses with different companies to learn yes. how to fix this stuff. This was bugging the hell out of it. And this was a rare form of psoriasis called guttate psoriasis. Yeah, psoriasis. That was activated. I, I wrote that because yeah. I thought the red spots, it was psoriasis. What, what, is, what is that? It's is a viral activation. Yeah. So what happens, we get this viral, we get this immune dysregulation, you get some bugs that are living in you that don't go. Mm. And they typically live in the gut. gut. Mm. And they find this home and the immune system's constantly firing up against them and then goes touch the skin. So I was one of those naturopaths 
use it. And I was talking to Katie when she posted this, and I and I actually made a comment on her Instagram post and said, "Hey, I don't forget, I was one of those failure naturopaths." And yeah. then she reminded me. She said, "Yes, exactly." And I remember our conversations about how frustrated I was that none of this stuff worked. It yeah. should bloody work. Mm. Yeah. The theory says it should work, and mm. it didn't. And that's why we made ATP. Mm. And what's really cool about this is I get so many testimonials that I never bothered sharing from all my old naturopath clients that are now telling me, and I didn't know how to take it at first. They're telling, because I was always, you know, feeling that, because they always, oh man, we wish you're still consulting and that sort of stuff. Well, they don't say that now, because they actually say they're getting better results listening to the podcast, following all our information and using the ATP products. Mm -hmm. Because now we've made the products that weren't available when I was in the naturopath clinic. Mm -hmm. And we make them with the quality that we need so that the data actually matches up with the product so it can actually work. And the funny thing is my clients now don't need to pay me to come and see me for a consultation fee. They don't need to do all that. They can actually listen to our podcast, do all their own research and you use all, all of our products and they're getting better results. Yes. So I've got people with endometriosis that we could never fix that's now fixed using the ATP protocols. We've got so many other things. But what's even better about it they, these are typically people that were coming to see me for themselves. They've now worked out how to fix themselves and now they're fixing the rest of their families and their husbands and using our information and using the product. So it's like kind of really, it's really kind of cool because I was thinking, oh man, I really sucked at this. What, what I love about this story is it teaches us something and teaches everyone something and that is they're just treating the gut here yet it heals a skin condition. Yeah. And it just shows you that, you know, like you and I know, oh yeah, it's the gut, it makes mm. sense. But most people out there think they've got a skin condition would go to a dermatologist for that yeah. just to treat the skin they say yeah. oh let's put whatever we can on there but what it's causing is a virus in the gut if it's cutate psoriasis which you think it is mm. um and and that is there's lots of viruses living in your gut that cause all sorts of skin conditions yeah, yeah. you know there's hand foot and mouth there's all sorts well, of remember, we got those other testimonials with people within 48 hours some yeah. acne rosacea cases entirely yeah oh the gentleman in england and i yeah. they're still one of my favorite testimonials mm. because yeah. he actually documented with photos over yes. 72 yeah. hours and, and again, it's really cool. And I know, Matt, you're talking with um, some of the guys at various universities, both here in Australia and also in yeah. university in the US. Are yeah. we going to mention which university? No. Or? no. And um, <laughs> mate, we, we've got some really cool stuff that yeah. we're doing with these guys, oh, yeah. which has is a, it's, <sighs> it's, it's difficult um, because you're, you're dealing a lot of the time with you know bureaucracy. We've mm. also got some of the studies that are coming through from some of the proteins that we're working yeah. with as well. Mm. A head of print. Um, you know what? We should probably do a whole podcast on that as well. Confidential information. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's it's to chagrin. <laughs> the nice thing is as well too. I feel like a carrot on a stick sometimes because we've signed NDAs, oh. not so that we can't release the information, mm. mind you. There's some, and I'm talking about the the uh, the no way protein. Mm. Oh, man. But having said that, we've got a, a, another product coming out relatively soon, where all of the information is published, which we mm. can share. Yeah. Exactly. So, and we are going to get that bloody information out. No. We'll get yes. it out. So yeah. anyway, all I was going to say mm. that is that. We just get everyone to sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> just get anyone that wants to read. You sign an NDA like us, and then you can read it mm. and. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's get back to some right, getting us some free Detox. information. So detoxification. So, okay, Matt, so I mean, obviously going back to this time of year in Australia, which you know, after Christmas, summertime, mm. people have blown out too much alcohol, you know, too, too much at me festive when you're living. That. No, Steve O, <laughs> no, no, you're the last person actually probably needs to do sure. this. Yeah. But um, I remember myself personally, and we've spoken about this before, liver detox was a really, really big one. Um, and then people would say, oh, you know, you've got to get your liver right, so you've got to go on, you know, methionine yeah. and mm. anositol and choline mm. Mm. and flush out your liver, maybe some, some uh, milk thistle extract yes. and, and what have you, because all the toxins have built up. And, mm. you know, now people are saying, ah, oh, that's rubbish. You know, your body should be able to heal itself. You know, you don't need to do anything. You just need to, you know, fast yeah. or, can, or whatever it may be. Can, so. I, can I read from a dietitian's opinion on detox? Sure. And I just this is from the, you know, the spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition basically says that the human body can eliminate any toxins it comes in contact with just fine. Wow. Yes. What about cadmium? Well, well this we is what, don't, this don't is what she says. Don't get into the details because this is a generic yeah, this statement. Is a, okay. a statement. <laughs> and so it causes detox diets, fat diets. Detox diets are elusive and popular, but they aren't proven to do what they say they do, i.e. flush toxins out of your system. Organs and the immune system can handle detoxification on their own no matter what you eat. The best Dexos and overall healthy eating program, along with plenty of fluid that promotes regular trips to the bathroom. What about arsenic? <laughs> no problem. Cyanide. Doesn't matter what you take. See, I love these Carbon grandiose broads. I think I can probably but disprove that. But then what's the other extreme? You get someone that says we just 
stop diet. eating everything. We fast, we yep. drink clean water and do juices, and you're going to strip all the toxins out of your and body the, with yep. no problems. And yeah. I appreciate this. There's quackery on both sides. Yeah, yes, so let's is. talk about the truth. Truth. Yeah, yeah, because exactly, yeah. what bugs me about this is it's very easy to find for someone to jump on a particular thing and then attack it without yeah. actually looking at the big picture. Mm. Well, I mean, you could attack both the Fruit Loops, the exactly. ones that say you live on universe juice, yeah. and then the ones here that are saying, no, nah, You can detox no, anything. anything. You just, anything. Yeah, Smoke. just swim in DDT and cover yep. yourself in mercuries and take, all those take. things that we know. You know, because don't forget when we do, um, where we deal with industry and raw materials, we mm. have these um, materials, safety data sheets that talk mm. about the toxic nature of these things and how much we have things like LD50s. Lethal, lethal dose, dose 50. 50 what, yeah. what dose of this food is going to kill 50% of the rats in this study? Yep. You know, like we know that you can't handle these toxins. But let's have a quick... What we need to do is give a broad picture mm. first. Get people to have a proper understanding of what detoxification and elimination is. Mm. And why words like liver detox are wrong. Mm. And why words... A statement saying that we can handle anything and it makes no difference to our body is even <sighs> equally wrong. Um, at least the liver detox has got some element of truth. Yeah. To it. So, so, um, so, quick question, Matt. Yeah. And just yes or no. Is it worthwhile? Is it beneficial to do some form of detoxification after a period of indulgence? Well, the, you, the problem you got here is you're using the wrong words. Right. We we are constantly detoxifying. We constantly detoxify. Makes sense. So when you say let's do a form of detoxification, yeah, go to the bathroom if you need to go. Yeah. Okay. What we need to do is support our detoxification pathways. Because what we must understand is these things run with nutrients. For example, we need to be able to maintain a certain amount of nutrients to be able to maintain our detoxification pathways. Mm -hmm. We need to support that. Just the same way you're talking about with dementia. For your brain to work, there's certain nutrients that it needs for that brain to work. Yeah. Um, for the skin to work. There's certain things we need to do to be able to allow things to actually work. And amazingly, with our detoxification system, most of these detoxification pathways are regulated by nutrients. nutrients. We're talking of B vitamins, amino acids, all these other nutrients. So what happens is when you have increased exposure, when you have excessive exposure, um, what happens is we deplete our nutrients, but also we change the way our body deals with these toxins. Please remember that our human system is designed to deal with the toxins associated with poisons and venoms mm. and, the, and those sort of things. You know, they're coming from bites and, and poisonous fruits and flowers or whatever we may have consumed and, mm. or that sort of stuff or infections and that sort of stuff. That's what our detoxification processes are designed for. Our detoxification processes are also involved in our survival mechanisms because just in case it's not a poison or a venom, it might be a virus or a parasite, your body has these defense mechanisms it needs to upregulate. So what happens is pathways change. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. But they can stay changed because what happens is if you survive, so if you induce a detoxification pathway to survive from a particular poison or a venom, you know how like you see in Princess Bride or whatever? Yes, and they I was go, thinking of Princess was thinking Bride. About that. Um, I wasn't. The guy was Anna, sipping. Anna so I wasn't thinking Princess so he Bride. Went Which through, comes from Australia. He went through and poisoned him. So he took lots of doses of poison to become resistant to that poison. So what that means is they upregulate detoxification pathways. Mm. So what happens is... What you if pull. you get an exposure to a toxin? It upregulates a cytochrome P450. It upregulates a detoxification pathway. You learn a new survival technique that mm. stays high. Yeah, mm. right. So what that does is that changes the way your body processes that poison. But mm. what if that poison's now gone? But that same process is used to regulate your estrogen. It's used to regulate right. your testosterone. Something That's else slips down that pathway. Exactly. Mm. It, sta it changes the way our body deals with other toxins in response to a toxic stress. And then what happens is our body must use all of these nutrients to deactivate that stuff so that way it can sit in the bowel so you can poo it out mm. without it being reabsorbed mm. or it can go to the kidneys and not form a stone and actually be eliminated or it can go off mm. through the elimination or it can go past the lymphatic system, not just loiter around in the lymphatic system and actually leave the body. So we need lots of nutrients to support the deactivation and the elimination we need to make sure that we're controlling our our water and you know drinking lots of water and having lots of wheeze sure. make sure we've got lots of fiber so mm. you can pull yep. it all out and bind it yep. um diaphoretic herbs such things as ginger things that make you sweat right. exercise so diaphoresis is another way of eliminating mm. yep. toxins through your skin so saunas and exercise so these things are all ways of supporting the elimination mm -hmm. so when we talk about detoxification we want to talk about reducing 
your toxic exposure mm -hmm. for a period of time. So that way we can reboot your survival pathways in regards to how you deal with those toxins. And during that time, we want to go through and clean up the mess. All of this stuff that needs to be eliminated, that is backlogging, we can go through and clean that up. So when we talk about... So if I say, should I do a detoxification? It's like, yes, and you are constantly. Mm, yeah. Should I support my detoxification processes and reboot my detoxification pathways after this recent abuse? Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll feel a hell of a lot better if we do that. And mm. so we're going to teach you how to do it and show you where yeah. that stuff fits in. Can Using I create foods. a footnote? And maybe we can come back to this after you sort of go through the mm. the the daily, if you like, the routine detoxification that we sure. do through good food, good yeah. nutrition, yeah. good support. But what about things like the... Um, you know, drinking the oil and lying on your side where you, you know, you flush out kidney stones. Well, these what, yeah, what, and yeah, these are more extreme trains, ones, right? Yeah. Like yeah. what you'd call sort of like an event. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, people who, and as I said, and, and I was guilty of this because this is what I was taught, right? So, yeah. Well, I so, do so, want to so talk about bile. So, so when we're talking about bile, when yeah. we're talking about bile flow, we'll yeah. definitely mention the gallbladder oh, flush. Right. Yeah. So yeah, like the flushes and I mean, mm. then doing like a, you know, like a bowel. I know one um, guy that I went and saw, this is years before I met you, Matt, Recommended to take huge amounts of um, an, an oxide. I think it might have been zinc oxide, mm. and which he says, you know, this is going to cause a plug, and then you're going to flush your bowels out. Like, you know, basically you're just trying to get diarrhea. Basically, magnesium oxide was it? Maybe it was maybe. Yeah, I don't care. That's the right. great diarrhea. Mm. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Zinc oxide help you vomit it out. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's right. I remember yeah. taking zinc and going, yeah, yeah. "Oh, yeah, this is yeah, making me feel really cause, sick." Cause and then, and then looking at the number one. When I was younger and selling products, and, and again, just reading the literature from mm. the companies yeah. was um, using methionine and ositol yeah. and choline yeah. with, um, you know, uh, thistle, that. and, and, and just years. and saying, right, if you've been drinking lots of alcohol, time to flush out the liver mm. and and do this and drink lots of water, and you know, you might get some headaches and all the rest of it and some fluidy bowel motion, and and I was taught that. That's yeah, what I was, I was taught, taught that. Right? And so so in college, we were crisis. taught that. Yeah, we we used to teach fasting and. And we'd make people very sick because there was no nutrients in water to support detoxification. Yep. Their toxins would build up. We're going to talk about the, the phase one intermediates. But toxins build up. You get really sick. Yep. We would call it a healing, healing crisis. crisis. Yeah. yeah. I mean, making people sick. We yeah. were making people sick. Well, they we were going good. The lemon yeah. juice one with the oil, I think oh, it was that. that, was that and you had plus. to lie on your left yeah. or right side. Yeah. I think left yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, left side. Yeah, because yeah. your gallbladder sits here so and drains, drains that way. That's that way. it. Yeah. Like you know, it would be interesting because a lot of people obviously would be interested to well, know. Is this a good it. thing or bad? Let's get into the details then. Enough of this waffle. Let's talk. Let's run through detoxification. The first thing I want to clear up. We talk about phase one detoxification. We talk about cytochrome P450s. You said it earlier. People assume the liver is our mm. first place of defense. It's not. No. Every mucous membrane in our body and every cell of our body has a phase one detoxification pathway. So it can convert fat soluble toxins or reduce them, hydroxylate it, oxidize it, basically degrade these hormones or compounds or poisons and convert it into something else mm. okay so it happens all over our body and the thing with those cytochrome p450 systems the way to speed those up the way to make those work faster for you to go and find stuff and convert it into something else is with toxic exposure so the only way to speed up your phase one detoxification is mm. through toxic exposure so what happens when we do have exposure to toxins Cytochrome P450s go faster because mm. they're the ones designed to help you deal with yeah. poisons and venoms and that sort of stuff. And it makes toxins water soluble, yep. you know, froth at the mouth, vomit, diarrhea, you know, you said loose stools, yep. mm. um, you said the vomiting, the mm. headaches, mm. all those sort of things yeah. are signs of cytochrome P450s going fast. Now, for perspective, a lot of people talk about cytochrome P450s in regards to the liver with drug interactions and nothing else. Mm. We've got to understand that a process of um, cytochrome P450 process is aromatization. For example, converting testosterone to estrogen is a phase one detoxification pathway. So what happens is if you overindulge in alcohols, yeah. you get excessive exposure. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you a good example of something like cadmium. You mentioned yep. it earlier. Yeah. So if we get an overdose of cadmium, which is not a natural poison venom no. that we would normally overdose on in, petrochemicals. in nature. Petrochemicals. Yeah. Typically comes with petrochemicals, yeah. fossil fuels and that sort of stuff or yeah. pollution. Um, it's a heavy metal that goes in. What our body normally uses to deactivate that heavy metal as it comes in is zinc and selenium. And when it comes in, zinc and selenium binds to it, and then it's deactivated. Now, imagine if that keeps happening. It depletes your zinc and selenium. Yeah. Cadmium then 
di- is directly linked with those five alpha reductase enzymes, yeah. which is a, a cytochrome P450. So five alpha reductase that converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone is also a phase one detoxifier. Mm. Now, what happens is if you deplete your chelating nutrients through overexposure, you then this cadmium then drives up the aromatase, it drives up the five alpha reductase, it creates massive hormonal problems. That can be corrected with chelation therapy using zinc, selenium, lipoic acid to bind the cadmium and clear it away, you then need to slow down the cytochrome P450s to fix your hormonal problem. Mm. Let me give you another example. That's cool. When you get exposed to pesticides, um, fertilizers, or other endocrine disrupting chemicals, they can upregulate, because they're a poison, they can increase a particular cytochrome P450 pathway in your liver that allows you to convert that toxin into a water-soluble thing so you can eliminate it out through your bowels, that exact same pathway converts our um, good estrogen into a bad estrogen, which is why we find such estrogenic effects that coming from these endocrine disrupting chemicals. It's not that necessarily that they have an estrogenic effect. In some instances, they change your liver to deal with that poison, and then that liver, when it goes to deal with your natural hormones, it's all out of whack. So what happens? Yeah, we can avoid that poison, you know, we can try to dodge it, but your pathways have been changed mm. and that's a, and you survived because of it which means your body then keeps it that way as a survival technique Smokes, yes. so what happens the more stress we have the more immune activity the more toxic exposure we have the faster the cytochrome p450 systems go what that means is your body's really good at converting fat soluble toxins into water soluble but then phase two has to clean up the mess mm. phase two is limited what speeds up phase two is the availability of nutrients. Right. Mm. If your phase one's been running fast because of toxic exposure, stress, inflammation, immune activity, yeah. it'll stay fast. What that means is your body increases all of this water-soluble toxins it's making. The phase two systems deactivate it, so that way you can put it into bile mm-hmm. and eliminate it with your gallbladder flushes that we'll talk about in a sec. Yep. Always send it to the kidneys um, to be eliminated or it'll end up in your lymphatic system. Um, that sort of thing. So basically mm. what happens is phase one runs really fast. The more toxins we have, the faster mm. it goes. So you don't need to speed that up. Yep. You never need to speed that up. It speeds up by itself. And that's what the dietitians are talking about. We have this ability to handle everything. Right. But they're only talking about one phase. Yeah, because... Phase one is just hydroxylation, basically. Exactly. Except for two of the CYP. Remember, there's, there's But that's how it makes 000. toxins more toxic. Like it does. There's a lot of drugs, yeah. for example, don't even... You don't feel them unless they go through phase one and be converted into codeine. a more toxic form. Morphine. Right. Yeah. Codeine's converted into morphine. Or, or for example, if you're a good... This is a classic one. pathway. So this is a... Cl- just before I forget, this is a really good one for the people at this time of the year. If you've been abusing alcohol, what happens is a cytochrome P450, 304, I think, it speeds up and goes extra fast, Mm. that converts alcohol into the form that gives you a hangover. So what happens if your phase one's going faster and faster, phase two, you're not supporting it with nutrients, it'll Mm. get slower and slower. What ends up happening, you start feeling like you're hungover before you get drunk. Because you're the alcohols, you know, when you get the feeling, you, know, you go through it, and all I of a sudden, don't get hangovers. Yeah, but then, you know, so your cytochrome P450s or your Balance. phase two pathways is balancing it out. Yeah. Okay, so that's handy. But other people, their cytochrome P450s get faster and faster and faster to deal with these poisons. Yeah, right. Um, and then what happens all of a sudden, they're not feeling the the alcohol fun effects. They're yeah, all of right. a sudden, they're starting to feel lousy, like they've got a hung- hangover before they've even got pissed. Oh. And that's like a sign that the, the fastest go, the yeah. cytochrome P450s are going too fast. Mm. So, I'm trying to simplify it, but it's quite complicated. So yeah. the phase one converts toxins to water soluble, but it happens all over your body. All and this is the link the with breast cancer, brain, mm-hmm. prostate cancers, um, uh, cystic fibrosis, infl- yep. mucus inflammatory conditions. All of these things are associated with cytochrome P450s going too fast in response to toxic exposure and stress and that sort of stuff. Mm. What happens then is we need to have all of these crazy amounts of... that You can't supply enough nutrients to keep up with phase one <laughs> like phase two needs li- list of all the amino acids here we've got all the oh. b vitamins we need all the aminos yep, we need all, all the sulfation we have yep. glucuronidation glycination and glutathionation so you need glutathione you need three amino acids sulfation you need taurines and the other sulfur yep. based cysteine amino acids so it's basically a, a protein milieu but the faster the cytochromes are going yeah. the more of those nutrients you need to keep up yes so when we talk about supporting detoxification we're mm. talking about supporting the required nutrients that your body is depleting at a rapid rate because you're detoxifying things too fast 
Yeah. So the the reality of a detoxification, it's not a detoxification, it's a reboot. We mm. need to go back and slow down those cytochrome P450s yes. that have been sped up. We, we need to make your detoxification more efficient yes. so your elimination is effective. So we need to slow down the cytochrome P450, stop making reactive intermediates, which mm. contribute to allergies, yep. lymphatic congestion, migraines, fluid retention, bad skin, um, food intolerances, chemical sensitivities, um, sticky bloods, bruising, um, I'm trying yeah, to, uh, dry mouth, constant urination. Hormonal uh, problems. Um, visual problems, hormonal yeah. problems, of course, mm. all those different weird forms of cancers and things like that. So we need to clear, stop making that stuff unless your body's capable of eliminating it. Do you want to list the nutrients that slow down phase one? I've got a yeah. list here. Yeah, so then what we want yeah, to good do... Good ones. A, a, but a general rule, mm. we, what did you say before that phase one is called? Uh, mainly runs on what sort of pathways? Oh, it's, it's a hydroxylation. Hydroxylation. Yeah. Hy- hydroxylation is the addition of an oxygen group mm. sticking out of a molecule. So we'll just keep it simple for the non So, But the basic rule is a lot of these antioxidants herbs, yeah. so a lot of the, the herbs and nutrients that are called antioxidants have yeah. this trend on lowering down the cytochrome yeah. P450. Like black that raspberry, pathway. blue raspberry, allergic acid from berries, pomegranates, grapes and walnuts and all those sort of things. Black black tea, turmeric, those sort of things regulate the cytochrome P450. Remember, there's 50,000 of these listed. Wow. So Matt's going to list them all now. Now, what's interesting <laughs> in them, <laughs> what, what, what's, interesting, what's interesting in them, these compounds he's talking about yeah. that actually help to slow down cytochrome P450s are yeah. uh, typically the polyphenolic compounds yes. that are linked in with a fibre. Yes. So by juicing those things and throwing away the fiber and throwing away a lot of those nutrients, you're not going to get that detoxification support you would have by having the whole fruit. Exactly. Yeah. And the funny thing is about juice fasting is that you're removing the fiber. And you've got to remember our big detoxification is this big tube that goes through. It's called poo. And it comes out in the toilet. That's a great detoxifier. Yeah. If you're taking the fiber out of your fruit and vegetables and just juice fasting, yeah. Yeah. what a crazy idea. Yeah. Well, you, you I, mean, we did the, I mean, one of my favorite podcasts that we did was on the pomegranate. Mm. And ah. it's funny, I just went to Bali. Mm-hmm. Um, over the um, uh, over the Christmas break, and they had a, a, a kind of a similar fruit. I'd say it's almost related in the way that it looks, mm. and the pericarp, which is the mangosteen. Ah. And and I know that the benefits, not just in the fruit, but also in the in the um, mm. pith, mm. but also in the rind. And we spoke about that as well too. These are the sorts of things that are bitter and they're horrible. But these are the sorts of things. You know, I'm, no, I'm not taking I'm the pith. Thinking, you think you're Thor? Yeah, <laughs> I'm so Thor. I can't even pith. But, <laughs> but the red pin. The um, but the cool thing is, is that these things again. Um, if you're juicing, how easy is it? As you've said, and we've said before, just take a bit of that pulp and throw yeah. it back in. And again, yeah. if you are going to juice, which isn't a bad thing, no, you get just, some nutrients. Just, just, yeah. just. Use a cold press juicer and put some of that stuff back in. Put the fibers back in. You need the fibers. Or just eat the whole damn fruit with your Mm. teeth. That's one. (laughs) That's me. But, I mean, like, you probably couldn't eat a whole pomegranate, like the rind. Oh, no. Because, you you know, there are too much of the toxins in there. I mean, a little Mm. bit. It's almost Mm. like arsenic. A little bit's good. Mm. Too much. Kill ya. Kill ya. So what what you find happening, a lot of... So basically, what you can find here is the herbs that slow down the cytochrome P450s, typically antioxidants. Yep. But that's when we're looking at the, the green teas, the milk thistles, yep. all those sort of things, shisandra berries, all those ones. Yeah. There's a little... This is why I love NRF2. And when, when we... NRF2 activators and that particular resilient gene NRF2, because you know what I've basically said, most people's problem is due to toxic exposure, phase one's going too fast, phase two can't keep up. Hmm. NRF2 activators slow down phase one, and speed up phase two. Yes. That's just a trend that they happen to do. The, you've got to realize, even with a herbal one, so even with a herb like a Shisandra, very powerful NRF2 activator, yeah. slows down phase one, speeds up phase two. Yeah, right. If you don't have the nutrients necessary for Shisandra to stimulate glucuronidation and glutathionation and that sort of stuff, it can't possibly work. Mm. Even herbs, just like drugs and things like that, if you don't have the nutrients, they're not capable of working. Mm. That's why it's so important. That's why we made the pillars. You know, we've got to have the nutrients mm. and then this other stuff will force stuff to change. Well, that's what, I mean, I don't know how many times I used to hear, Matt, before we started working together, people coming and going, oh, my friend's using this and getting great results. I'm getting nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there are so many variables, and again, yeah, we've spoken oh, about it, but one of them obviously is nutrients. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, what about may not even the major ones? The nutrients, the, the variable may not have anything to do with you. Yeah. For example, what if you've, we've done your cytochrome P450s perfectly? We've balanced that out. Mm. We've supported your detoxification via your liver. Your gallbladder's flowing nicely. It goes into your bowel. You used to happen to have an overgrowth of candida, mm. clostridium or something like that. It will actually feed on that conjugated toxin and put the estrogen back in. Mm. You can have a thing called an estrobolome, which is a 
group of bugs that love and thrive on estrogen. And as your body's trying to eliminate it from the body, they can break it down and put it back in and feed on it over and over again. They found the same thing in people with um, polycystic ovarian and testosterone. You can get mm. a testrobolo. Mm. So basically, having an excessive exposure or a food source for bugs can actually overgrow a population of bugs that then nothing to do with you. They're just screwing around with your hormones so they can constantly be fed what they want. So that's why doing a gut, that's why people talk about gut cleanse. You can't actually fix this thing unless you do a mm. gut cleanse first. Mm. What they're often doing is they're wiping out a lot of the microbiome that's putting the bugs back, in, putting the toxins back in. Oh, yeah, and that, it was always yeah, talked yeah. about, oh, you can't clean the, you can't clean the blood until you clean the liver. Yes, and you can't yes. clean the liver until you clean the bowels Bowel. because yeah. of the toxins coming from the mm. bowels, from the leaky gut walls and stuff like that. It's like, no, man, you've got to kill off some of these bugs because yeah. they're contributing bulk amounts of lipopolysaccharide, which is activating immune and inflammatory pathways. They're contributing bulk amount of toxins, but they can totally screw around with your... Well, they got a well, different the one, plan to the, you. The one that scared a, a friend of mine, a lady friend of mine, mm. was the one that... Um, the, in the gut that could recycle estrogen. She was, yeah. when she heard that, she was terrified. Yeah. E. coli can do that. Yeah, e. coli right. is one of the main yeah. ones. And yeah, the right. worst thing about E. coli, it's normally there. Yeah. So they go and do a test. They don't measure how much of it. And they say, oh, all that stuff's normal. It's normal. But you might have like, and some with Candida, though. Yeah. Candida's normally there. Yeah. So they, they will go through and say, no, no, don't worry about that. They're, no one, they're not measuring the, the doses of these things accurately to say that men, or going through the symptom picture going, this could be causing your problem. Yeah. And that's why when people do their the gut rights and things like that, they quickly reboot their gut. All yeah. of a sudden, they're eliminating things. They're not recycling things. Yeah. Fixes anything from skin to hormones and menstrual and, cycles. And estrogen and, and those hormones are small molecules. They're easily, easily absorbed across the bowel. Yeah. So you will reabsorb them, even if yeah. you haven't got leaky gut. Well, that's why so, you can so put them in a cream and everything. Yeah. I mean, we can yeah, penetrate through the body. Testosterone cream, progesterone yeah. cream. But the thing was, it was scary. And I mean, talking specifically about estrogen detoxification again, yeah. which is probably something you coined well, I'd never heard of detox. I'd heard of blocking, but not not detoxification, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But was that the estrogen would come in? It would be bound, mm. you know, in terms of whatever thing that you were doing. But then these little bugs would then break it apart, break right. it apart. Yeah. So yeah. where the body was going to take it out through the yeah. poo or whatever yeah. it was going to yeah. do. It's called it's called mm. enterohepatic recirculation. Yeah. Sorry for the big word. Horrible. But, but yeah. there's there's yeah. No, no, not the word, but the, <laughs> the, the idea of it. It, it. it goes via the pathway glucuronidation, and yeah. it gets bound to a, a glucuronidase, goes into the gut. And the, the bug breaks it apart, and you mm. get the estrogen Those reabsorbed. Bastards. And for the guys bastards. that are taking notes, Firmicute? Oh, I, I, yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, um, I want testosterone in my gut, so I get more testosterone. It's not yeah. work. Doesn't work like that, does it? Yeah. Well, the problem is, is if those same bugs are activating lipopolysaccharides, they're going to upregulate your cytochrome P450, turning your test to estrogen or dihydro if you don't fix the problems. That's you know, I've got these boobs. Huh? Oh. Well, they didn't know, but uh, you said before as mm. well too, with regards to too much alcohol consumption mm. in terms of mm. obviously things mm. going down the wrong pathway. People who are uh, chronic abusers of alcohol and aren't detoxifying it could certainly end up with things like gyno, correct? Oh, they yeah. do. They do. Not only for drinks. that, but a lot of the alcohol, but in particular, beer is full of estrogen as well. Yeah, yeah right. But um, that, and we were talking about before with uh, bugs liberating the estrogen for reabsorption. For those taking notes, the enzymes called beta glucuronidase that they release. I'm only saying that because that's the mechanism of action when people use calcium deglucurates. Mm. But that's also things like pomegranate, kelp. Rosemary, they all have this ability to inhibit mm -hmm. it as well. Yeah, it's cool. So you want to inhibit it so then you can detoxify. So that way your estrogen stays. See, so like the way I imagine it, you talked about the estrogen being a you know, tiny little molecule. So when they glucuronate, they attach like a brick to it that mm. makes it too big <laughs> to be reabsorbed. So then these bugs remove that brick, the estrogen comes back, they get to feed on it again and again mm. and again, you know, and they Cerebral. thrive on it. So if we look at, if I summarise what we've said so far, that toxic exposure, stress, inflammation, immune activity... Mm pollutants, poisons, venoms, of course, which is what it was designed for, mm. um, all speed up phase one. Phase one stays running fast until which time you're capable of slowing it down mm. because that is your survival technique. Mm. Now, be aware that these survival techniques become imprinted into your memory. Mm -hmm. When you get a toxic exposure again, which is why when I try to drink Bundaberg rum again, I instantly feel like vomiting. Yeah, My, right. What happens is your body... You know that. You know how you've got some no, things... I get that, well, no, I can't is you drink rum. bourbon or something? Tony would slap me if I drink yeah. rum. But you know how that sometimes... Um, I went camping with a bottle of ouzo once, and I never can't. No, I can't tequila. touch ouzo again. So I yeah, can't see what I mean. Oh. So you know how you get these smells. Oh, you smell I something, and you're like, yep. "That's actually your cytochrome P450 is reminding you that you've once before had to eliminate this. You nearly thing, died, and you almost died <laughs> of poisoning. Probably don't do it again. Don't let it get past your throat. Yes, right. 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 it up yeah, because right. you have cytochrome P450s all the way through. Oh, that's so cool. So you see what happens is these things adapt. So then what happens is huh. because they stay fast. 
we need to slow them back down. And we slow them back down with those list of antioxidants yep, ones, that yep. we will actually... Um, you got know, a huge list. Yeah, yeah we got a massive list of those. I, I mean, I got really yeah. bad food poisoning yeah. when I was young in New Zealand in a restaurant which is closed down now called the Swiss Chalet. And we went there and we had this this meal and I, I remember it had this mushroom sauce on it. Yeah. I could not touch mushroom yeah. sauce. I couldn't go yeah. anywhere near mushroom sauce yeah. for probably 10, 15 years. You know that... Uh, I'll tell you, this is a bit messed up. This, this is a little bit... <laughs> probably insightful stuff about myself that probably don't need to be told but I will anyway because I yeah purple vok you know that drink oh, purple vok no Voc? way I no. got drunk my first Joe, drink I ever drank I don't Voc. know what the, I don't normally lose my memory yeah. or get drunk I must yeah. have got so drunk but anyway whenever I see that same colour purple yeah I get anxiety and nauseous <laughs> like the purple now I don't know if it's just because it's that same neon nightclub but I was talking to my wife about it. she laughs at she thinks I'm an idiot um, it's called Parfait. It's got a picture of the Eiffel Tower on it. I don't care. To me, it reminds me of anxiety vomit. No, <laughs> you know, something, you know, it's, it's that colour. And I was telling the wife, I hate that colour. Because she was showing me this colour going, oh, I want to do And I said, no, I no, fucking hate vomit. that colour. Mm. And it's like, I don't know if it's because it's that nightclub neon light colour. Don't color, know. But oh. whatever it is about that colour, it reminds me of nausea. <laughs> With no wonder, yeah. see, but I don't know if that's a sad occurrence, but that's probably just linked. No to wonder we're yeah, twins bang, because yeah. the very first system. thing that I got drunk on was purple vodka because yeah. I didn't know what to drink. Went into the bottle eye because I was a big sixteen-year-old, so I looked yeah. eighteen. Yeah. Bought this horrible crap, yeah. drank the whole bottle of it, yeah. spewed it up well, all over a mate's carpet, yes. which I That's think is the, I too. the stains are still there to yes. this day, which yes. is just vibrant. Purple. Yeah, I was dating this girl. And, and, um, that, that was the first time I did. <laughs> the next time she took to me to a Mexican restaurant and got me really drunk on wine, I passed out the couch and woke up and did the same thing. But the next time it was with Mexican food and red wine. Oh, oh. it kind of just didn't. End. It ended badly. <laughs> it, where too much stuff happened, I just I bowed out of that. One. Oh. Mm. Mate, but um, what you do when anyway. you're young and stupid, seriously. Jeez. So, these are all examples of what happens when your phase one gets pre <laughs> gets driven up driven through up. the toxic exposure. Nice, nice. Pullback, and so, man. Steve probably doesn't even have memories of these because no. he never abused his body to this oh, extreme that it's Chinzano got to that point. when I was 16. Chinzano, bottle, a litre bottle of Chinzano. It's cheap when you're 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a damn yeah. good Go reason for the cheap why stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the reason now. I didn't know yeah. I was 16. I thought, oh, this and is a lot of And spumante, that's the other one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What was yeah. that? There was a Doctor vodka. Oh, two buck chuck, we used to call them. There was a particular <laughs> vodka orange that got taken off. A vodka <laughs> orange in a car. In a goon bag. Yeah, in a goon bag that got taken <laughs> off the market because they found too much ethanol in it. It was actually making oh, people ethanol get, is alcohol. literally getting blind drunk. Yeah. yeah. Oh, methanol, you mean? Yeah, I don't know. methanol causes blind drunkness, like blind, physical yeah. blindness. Oh, I can't remember. Ethanol is the antidote for it. It was something horrendous too, like scary, that made you suggest you shouldn't have touched it anyway oh, and it was ten dollars yeah. a cask for vodka and orange uh, who says you get what you pay for yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no that just keeps giving doesn't it <laughs> you get well and truly more than you paid for that so my big point of our detoxification is mm. our body is capable of detoxification mm. if we support it nutritionally yeah. it's also capable of doing detoxification too well where it gets stuck into a bizarre form where it thinks it's trying to keep you alive which it would mm. if it was a life-threatening poison or a venom right. but it's reacting to normal everyday toxins that yeah. way and it totally screws with your brain chemistry your hormones and everything so with detoxification the simple rule of reducing cytochrome p450s which is reducing phase one with antioxidant herbs slow it all down antioxidant herbs but reducing toxic exposure, trying to eliminate <laughs> some stress, trying to reduce some inflammation and yep. immune activity, having healthy guts, all those things will allow your cytochrome P450s to slow down. Yeah. Okay. Without that, you need constant support to keep them slow, mm. which is why daily consumption of antioxidant fruit and mm. vegetables and supplementation mm. will keep that low mm -hmm. you know so like our resilience products and cord rx and and gut right have a look at the ingredients in those use the supplements but you look at those foods eat bulk of those they will keep those pathways yeah low. and they're all the good foods i mean they're they're all the goodies there 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 are some that suppress it more stronger than others what like uh, oh like grapefruit oh that's yeah tell us about that I well, love well grapefruit. grapefruit contains naringenin which is a chemical that it slows down the cytokine how do you people. pronounce it i thought it was naringenin there's different oh. ones Oh, yeah, there's, there's another there's, one. There's, there's, there's polyphenols. There's naringenin, there's naringenin, and there's yep. naringen. Yep. Oh. And they get interconverted. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what, what they do is they slow down the cytochrome P450 3A4, which is an important one because 60% of drugs uh, metabolize that pathway. Mm. Yep. So if you've had your beta blocker mm. in, the, mm. in the morning... But don't forget, and alcohol and caffeine speed that speed up. Speed it up, yeah. 
Right. Yeah. So it's, so, it's funny these interactions. So, man. so, but, but if you're trying to be healthy yeah. and you have a grapefruit with mm. your beta blocker, your blood pressure can drop two legs and sit at the wheel, pass out, and die by crashing into a tree. So don't so do that. Don't do that. But, but most St. John's Wort was the other one. St. John's yeah. Wort, that speeds right it up. But, but, you know, like if you have. Does that speed it up? Yep. Yeah, St. John's Wort so speeds speed it up. Uh, that does the opposite. So yeah. It so, so if you're on your warfarin to keep your clots down mm. and you're having your St. John's Wort because you're feeling a bit moody or whatever you want and you detoxify your warfarin, you can get a clot and die. So, I mean, I'm being a little bit. No, 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 but I know there are warnings on that. Yeah, mm. and but there are now warnings. Don't have grapefruit and this sort of thing with with but, this. Yeah, but yeah. having said that, though, grapefruit with caffeine is fantastic because it preserves the half life of the um the, the caffeine. Viagra mm, is right. that what you're saying? No, no, caffeine. Oh, caffeine, yeah. Oh, what you, you can extend the half-life of drugs if you want to. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Then they've now got Cialis, which you and I all take to, to boost What's ourselves. That? What's that? It's a long-acting Viagra that lasts for 20 hours half-life. So Who the hell would want a Woody for 20 you know, hours? You don't get a Woody for half an hour. You get it oh, for 20 hours. You get a half-life of the drug. Yeah. So the drug lingers around your body. So it's called the Weekender. They market it as you can take it at Friday night and it will work over the whole weekend. What's what, you walk around with a Woody all weekend? No, no, what, no. Banging no, in you, now? What you, am I going to do You still need that? stimulation. <laughs> Doesn't it? That's normally how you get woodies. Yeah, how yeah. This, I don't understand this. Me neither. It, 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 never, the enzyme, I read, an ad, I read a thing. I didn't read it. Someone just said, oh, I heard a story about a bloke who took Viagra and he bled out his ears and died. So I've never <laughs> touched it. Eh? It's one of those things oh, I've just read. No, I don't have any oh, do problems. Oh, yeah, no, some, don't you? Oh, don't you don't any photos. Don't. <laughs> and again, without getting into too much detail, like I'm mid-40s now, and I know a lot of guys my age might suffer from that, but... Take the Mars, mate. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Mars, yeah. Better. Mars is enough trouble. Yeah, but seriously, but I mean, I understand nitric oxide and all the rest of mm. it. But I mean, good healthy exercise. I mm. mean, you know. Yes, it is a good John source. John and I were in the states. Oh, here we go. And we were looking. What state? Drunk? No, no, yeah. Texas. <laughs> we were setting up our 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 factory over there. And, right. Uh, anyway, so we're we're hungry. We're looking for something to eat, and uh, John goes, "Oh, look, you know, here's a couple of places. Look, look let's go in there." So we. Get in there, and it was a it was a gay bar, which you know that's fine. If that's what you but John looks at me and he goes, "Let's blow this joint." I said, "Blow it." <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm going next door. <laughs> the problem, the <laughs> toxification, yes, and elimination. So while we're talking about bowels, yes. No, so I'll just quickly summarise. So the, the big point is, is we use these antioxidants, we mm. use these things to slow down the cytochrome P450s, mm. and you can research all those sort of things. But typically, it's a lot of these antioxidant herbs that we yeah. talk about. Um, then the only way to support phase two, the limiting factor for your ability to, for phase two to function is either nutrient availability, if you simply do not have enough nutrients. For example, if you're fasting and you've cut protein out of your diet mm. and you have no amino acids to support your detoxification, you'll get worse before you get better. So phase two, you need to support it. Yeah. Then what happens, right. we're talking about elimination. After phase two has deactivated the toxin using nutrients, it's going to send it to the bowels the microbiome is going to probably have a bigger impact on what happens to it from there. So fibre and regulating your microbiome or doing it in conjunction with something mm. like a gut right that's going mm. to control what happens once it's in the bowels. Then the other pathways, before it gets into the bowels, it has to be made into bile. Okay, So the liver makes bile. Bile goes through the gallbladder and it's the, the bile that eliminates the toxins into the bowels via the liver. So... We have a group of herbs that you can Google again called cholerogog and choleratic herbs that increase the flow of bile. Those nutrients you mentioned before, those amino acids, they're called lipotropes. Mm -hmm. They actually yeah. have the ability mm -hmm. to increase bile production apparently and they do it by supporting phase two conjugation reactions. There's just a hell of a lot more of them than they can fit into a little yeah. a little capsule. Like we need to look at full amino acids. You know, That's where essential amino acids are important. That's why mm. these essential amino acids must be there because yeah. you can't do these jobs without them. Um, so you make bile that way. If you have gallbladder problems, so if you have gallstones, that's an indication that you don't effectively make bile. Mm. So your elimination of toxins via your bowels from your liver is something's going wrong. So if you've got a history of gallstones and gravel, what it usually means is you've got plenty of cholesterol in your bile, mm. pl probably plenty of bile. Pig one, one of the three things is out of whack. You've either got bile pigments, cholesterol, or lesser than outer ratios. Mm. So look into that. If you don't have a gallbladder because it's been removed because of stones, mm. removing the gallbladder has stopped you getting that pain and everything like that, but it hasn't fixed the bile production problem. So if you've had a history of a, if your gallbladder has been removed, you say, I don't have to worry about that. Just we'll find out why it got removed, mm. what was going wrong there, because you've got a problem you need to fix. Because mm. the only thing that's happening now is you don't have a gall to cat a sack to catch the bile. It's mm. just trickling straight in your bowel. So you don't know if there's stones and gravel coming through. Mm. So 
have a look at your gallbladder and your bowel to make sure you're capable of eliminating it into your bowels. Then we need to make sure your bowels are regular, make sure there's adequate fibre, microbiome's under control mm. so the stuff can leave the body. Mm. Otherwise, it's going to go to the kidneys. Now, kidneys are going to eliminate it with water. The biggest problems you can have if, with your kidneys is if your electrolytes are out of whack. If you don't have enough calciums and magnesiums to help bind to this toxin to eliminate it in the urine, mm. it will join to the wrong thing. For example, if you've got a buildup of oxalates, you then... Um, you've got a magnesium deficiency, the body will use calcium to bind to the oxide, that makes a kidney stone, yeah. where normally it'd make magnesium bind and it'll mm. eliminate through your urine. So like these nutrients, as I'm saying, just and I'm not listing specific nutrients, there's too bloody many. Mm. We're talking about just general nutrients. Anything that's an essential nutrient, we need to make sure you've got some. And that's why nutritional support is so important for detoxification. Not organ support or not driving mm, something mm. with herbs or putting yourself through hell and giving yourself diarrhea does not eliminate more no. it, it actually creates more problems through leaky gut wall and reabsorption mm. of toxins so mm. it's a funny thing so then when we're looking at the kidneys we just got to make sure they're capable of working and that sort of stuff with a basic filter look mm. after that filter coincidentally a lot of the same herbs that we talked about as antioxidants that regulate the liver mm. pathways are also anti-inflammatory and protective against the kidney nephrons and stop kidney damage so yeah. it's kind of it makes it easier um then what we're looking at is if those things aren't working if your bowels aren't eliminating and your kidneys aren't eliminating that's where most of our waste gets into our lymphatics mm. and that's when people talk about lymphatic drainage mm. or that's when people are getting yeah, that's oh my blood's toxic because I'm getting boils and carbuncles mm. and uh, or fluid retention and swelling and that you might do a sauna or a spa or massages and things like that. But just got to be, it's a little funny. Like for example, one waste. Again, we mentioned oxalates before. Mm. If you've got an oxalate issue, you can go in a sauna and it'll drop your oxalates and yes. strip it out through your sweat. Well, but if your problem's enough. uric acid. Uric acid can't fit through your skin, it'll make it worse. Yeah. You, if you do saunas to get rid of uric acid, you'll make uric acid crystals and get gout. Mm. Where if you actually supported its elimination through the kidney where you can urinate it out, mm. that's how you do it. We're actually looking at using the infrared sauna at the moment. I want to All do right. a little bit more study yeah. into it, but it's, it's supposed to be quite good. I'm, yeah. I'm quite well, in, interested in I, So, you know, I might, might actually buy one of those. Do you know what the funniest thing? Sorry, just Sorry. quickly, I know you got something. So, but that, that with a sauna, one of the most important toxins that it eliminates is um, hypervitaminosis or uh, <laughs> excessive use of vitamins. Yeah, right. One of our biggest problems with our defects in our liver de detoxification pathways is people trying to be too clever, taking bigger doses of specific vitamins, thinking it's going to drive a mm. pathway when mm. it doesn't. Yeah. It actually adds burden to your detoxification. For example, B3, for example, needs to be methylated to function. It'll deplete all your methylators if you yeah. overdose on B3. Yeah, it's crazy. And what's interesting about it, you might be overdosing on B3 to build a particular enzyme called methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is essential for methylation. Mm. So overdosing and trying to be too clever creates problems. And if you aren't perspiring enough, then you can't eliminate those water-soluble vitamins, yes. and they can be a toxin. Well, yeah. that, that, that vitamin paradox mm. that we did, mm. the, the um, podcast on that, was a real eye-opener for mm, me and for a lot right. of other people as well too. They More is better. And especially mm. when it's a synthetic form, yep. the body really mm. can have massive issues with too many vitamins. Yeah, we are time. getting vitamin overload which is maybe not leading to a poisoning per se but it's certainly leading to these sorts of issues yeah, Matt. yeah. well, well that, it's amazing yeah because Go, you, you talk about saunas <laughs> and we talk about sweating it out and that sort of thing a great way to move lymph and to sweat out is to go for a run or something yeah, or exercise. do yeah. some intense exercise it also burns fat yeah. which yep. is where a lot of your fat soluble toxins it sweats it out of your yep. body helps your bowels helps you urinate so that's a good and uh, weirdly you know, exercise well, is a good detail tell about the, the infrastructure so the the architecture of lymph oh okay it but, doesn't have a heart no, it, it doesn't. The lymph air goes throughout your whole body. It's like your second circulatory system, and it ends up back at the top of your heart where it goes in your bloodstream again. So you, you want to get the lymph. The lymph actually has one-way valves in it, and the only way you move the lymph is with muscle contraction. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you contract your muscle like running or gymming or whatever it is, then the lymph moves, and it can move through mm -hmm. the lymphatic system. So yep. people go, oh, I'll go and get a lymph massage. We'll go for a run. Or go yeah, to the gym. go for a run. Yeah. Or even dry skin. But the funny yeah. Because of those one-way valves, yeah. anything, anytime you get the momentum and yeah. movement of fluid under the skin, they will only go one way yeah and as you drag it up it's going to drag more and because yeah. of the valve stops it going back you can actually clear it away so yeah. anytime you do lymphatic and you can do the simplest thing if you've got a problem with lymphatic congestion 
when you just do your normal process of like showering or mm. something like that, if you always do it back towards the heart, heart, you're actually working the lymph while you're just washing your skin. Mm. Um, you could do that with dry skin brushing. Mm. You can do that when you dry yourself. Uh, you can do that mm. with moisturizer. Anything you want to do. If you've got tendency for fluid retention extremities, always drive that lymph towards back. The, heart. the mm. heart's going to push the blood that way. You're not going to yeah. push it backwards. No. But you can get that lymph moving through point. so many different ways. And that's why, of course, you know, if you get a snake bite from poisoning, you yeah. you, you put a bandage above it yeah, or on it above lymph, it. Not in your and blood. It goes through your lymph system ah, yeah that, that that's the I example that. of that that's yeah. why they will change it that's why it used to be a tourniquet it's yeah, trying yeah. to shut down the blood now they've got no no we've got to immobilize the joint because we've got to stop muscle contractions from pushing the, the poison around yeah so if you get bitten by a snake just hang your leg down or if it's your leg i hope yeah. it's your leg if, it's your, uh, if you hang your leg down and try not to move it and you just basically splint it mm. and hold it and the whole point is there's no muscle contractions yeah but ten, you, you, you bandage it up to restrict the lymph movement and you don't want your heart poison. beating too much because yeah. that's going to get you, you, heard, you, you heard that joke about the the you know the two guys that went camping and mm. one of them you, you, the, the, one of the guys was going for a for, to the toilet and he was having a piss and um big brown snake come up and uh, no, tie pen bit him, bit him on the, oh. bit him on the pecker. Right. And yeah. anyway, he fell over and he went, mate, mate, I've been bitten by a snake. It got me on the pecker. Yeah. And um, he's gone, mate, lay there, immobilise it, don't do anything. He yeah. goes, I'm going to run to help. You know, 100 yeah. metres up the road, there's a range station. So he runs up there and he goes, mate, my mate's been bitten on the pecker. What do I do? He goes, mate, he says, um, you know, quickly go back, make a small incision, suck out the poison. So he, he's run back to his mate and he says. Mate, mate, you know I can I can feel you know darkness is closing in. What did he say? And he goes, "Sorry, mate, you're gonna die." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That That's probably clean enough to make the cut yeah. too. I oh, think. Yeah. I know. So, so, so Matt, what what you're going back to this this comment from a dietitian saying that it doesn't matter what you eat and all that sort of thing. No. I think the lacking of understanding of the biochemistry behind this, yeah. you know. The dietitians, you know, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, mm-hmm. but they don't seem to recognise the CYPs, phase one, phase two, in you know my what experience. bugs me the most about these people? Okay, we're ready I'm for that. I don't care. Yeah, I'm ready for okay. it because it says I believe it's true. Yeah. I don't believe they have any training in the functional properties of foods. Mm. I don't believe they have any respect for foods' abilities to manipulate enzyme systems, for them to do these things. I think they're looking at macros. Yep, they're well. looking at protein, carb, and fat. They're yeah. looking at the body has organ systems. I think they've totally forgotten that foods are sources of nutrients. Mm. And the fact that they've forgotten that food is a source of nutrients and nutrients are essential for survival. Functions, Just like yeah. when you show a doctor a Krebs cycle or a, the, mm. the vitamins associated with mitochondrial yeah. stuff, they're like, oh, I totally forgot all about yeah. that that's where they actually sit that's why yeah. we need them i honestly believe dietitians are looking at the f- uh, are doing nothing more than promoting the food pyramid and not instructing people of the functional benefits of food uh, uh, things like macrobiotic recipes um actual like using food for therapy mm. um they don't consider that at all they're looking um, at body composition based on macros alone yeah well and, i agree and fiber and, and the paper, the paper they've got is if you just read the title, Modulation mm. of Metabolic Detoxification Pathways Using Foods and Food-Derived Components, a Scientific Review. Now, that's a paper I got this information from. Yeah. So that tells you that foods modulate metabolic pathways. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to beneficially modify those well, So we're talking about pathways? two things here. Yeah. Foods were in herbs and they have the ability to create a dynamic change. Yeah. We're talking about essential nutrients, make sure you're capable of doing yep. it. And herbs and foods have the ability to manipulate the pathways and change Correct. them. And if you strategize that properly, you can offset for any insults that you've dealt with. You can reboot, you can mm. rechange, you can clear out the stuff that you've lost. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, mm. and it goes on to talk about the specific foods that benefit this. And this is what we're promoting. We're promoting, you know, the, the basic nutrients, mm. the, the oils, of course, like oral oil are fantastic because it gets the bile flow a bit. And that helps with detox. So essential fats are good. And you get the, these nutrients, these foods we've talked about, great fiber, exercise, brushing, saunas. These things help with detoxification. You can't just say, oh, you know, your body will take care of itself. It's got a liver. Mm. It's like, well, I've got a car, but it doesn't drive to Perth on it. I need to fuel it. Yeah, yeah. And what we're talking about is giving yeah. the car the fuel to yeah. do the job. And also these herbs. We're talking about the ability to hit the throttle and yeah. hit the brake and just manipulate yeah. the speed of different yes. systems. And you combine that with essential nutrients and your body's capable of cleaning up some of the mess. So it does And it's me. rubbish to think that mm. you, there's no amount of poison that you can consume that your body can't deal mm. with. That's why it's poison. That's why skull and crossbones. Yeah. That's why these things kill Actually, people. And, and just quickly, I, th- I might have made a mistake before. Steve... 
didn't they used to give people arsenic and cyanide was the other one in small amounts that that is beneficial but in large amounts will kill you obviously yeah well cyanide is found in foods like the isothiocyanates in apples or, or broccoli and that sort mm. of thing and that has metabolic effects because of this i'll, I'll call it a, a mild toxin but it's not mm. cyanide mm. the cyanide well, it resembles a toxin so yeah. it, it tricks the body into yeah. thinking you've got a poison That's coming right. and so in the response to its thinking a poison's coming it responds by increasing detox your antioxidant pathways and enhancing way. detox that's how schisandras resveratrols mm. most of these things work by tricking the body into thinking they're actually a poison mm. then the body speeds up preparing for a poison yeah and then it can just deal with the Anything stuff that's else? coming in through yeah, right. now look if you're 1946 and you're in the nuremberg trials the nazis did take cyanide capsules at a huge dose and it killed them instantly yeah i wasn't stops there the, no, no, I, wasn't, wasn't I was there i'm old enough but uh, <laughs> it's, it just stops your mitochondria so, yeah. so cyanide at the wrong dose will flat out kill you. Actually, no, no you question. look a little bit like you know Hisler. Was it Hisler? I think a little bit. Do you think? Hisler? Yeah. Get that no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Did gonna, you forget yeah. Hitler's name? No, no, not Hitler. <laughs> Hisler. Oh, <laughs> there it was. It. He was the. He was one of the worst. He was the. the what, was he the captain of the SS or? Yeah. Whatever? yeah. No, I don't yeah. like to read about. Mm. Yeah. So I'm so part um, Jewish, part German. Yeah. So no. I'm, I'm like you, Jew. Really? Yeah. Surprise, surprise. My son calls you Rabbi Matt. I'm, I'm uh, Scottish. I'm boring. <laughs> you should get one of those sort of chaps. Shouldn't I? Like, no, I don't hey, need to. Because you're hey, building a solar don't. panel for a sex machine. I don't need to. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. You guys are working on the solution for that. Mm. Yeah, that's why I'm going to get you a little cap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it'd be Spray good to on. be Jewish to, to cover those little ball patch. Oh, maybe that's where it started. I'm don't not know. sure. But, mm. What about monks Australian. then? They shaved theirs. Oh, that's an idea. Friars and that sort of stuff. I'm Australian anyway. Yeah. I'm pretty boring, fifth, sixth generation. Yeah, just, same here. Man. It's yeah. Just, uh, before that, it was English and Scottish and you know, yeah. usual convict thing. So. Oh, yeah, I'm a bit of everything. Boring. Weird, low self-esteem. I hate myself, love myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, anything else? No. Because we've got well, some FAQs to get into? No, absolutely. This, this, is, this is what it's all about. It's about detox. I, I like the concept of detoxifying as hey, you go. I do want to mm. use your brain, though, to research the infrared... Um, Saunas. Uh, saunas. Yeah, I yeah. do too. Um, I'm interested. In and, and, and looking at manipulating hormones and detoxification and everything through through saunas. Because, I mean, you've got the traditional Swedish sauna, yeah. which is where you put, you know, hot, hot rocks bricks. and you're know, really heating up the body mm. big time. That can affect your swimmers, though, can't it? If you It can. Uh, t- uh, temperatures of 30, 39 and above kill your swimmers, which is yeah. often a good thing if you're, you know, married like us. Um, uh, did I tell you my hip hop theory? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> what? No. So you know how there's yes. So you know how there's all this hip hop and rap music, and no one listens to rock and roll as much as they used to. Well, speak my theory was in the (laughs) seventies and eighties, and going to night. So what you got to realize: the rock and roll people were the ones that had the tight jeans. They did. Their their nuts get hot, Mm. and they don't make the same amount of sperm. Mm. The baggy pant hip hop rappers. Ah. Bred like rabbits. They are bred so now what's happened is there's this genetic potential of baggy pant wearing people with nuts full of sperm. The rock and roll guys can't keep up. So what's happening now is we've lost a lot of our rock and roll genetic mm. material. And then we've acquired hip hop rap stuff. And look what's happened to the world. It's natural selection in a bad so Look way, what's happened it? to the world, Steve. Yeah, I know. Well, that means the AFL player should have been extinct extinct yeah well, there's a damn good reason why it's just afl australian aussie rules it's yeah. never expanded anywhere they tried to do it in other countries they couldn't even breed a, a nah. next generation nah. of <gasps> uh, i love the old rock and roll anyway Should what we? were you talking about uh, well god gave rock and roll oh too. hot god nuts no nice sperm roll. yeah and saunas yeah did you like that segue to kiss yeah it was what a kiss a quick kiss song god did you guys, i'm not gonna watch <laughs> if you watch it i'll just cover my eyes i like the old rock things you know i'm old man I yeah i fucking love it yeah you got Shandy, any kids, Steve? Have I any kids? You, no. No, you're tight jeans. See? Tight Theory. jeans. Tight jeans. I'm a rocker. There you go. Rocker. Tight rocker. jeans make it. You, will not, got a big you will not contribute to the genetic rock and roll future of it. Uh, that's probably a good thing. It's a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a roof from me. I've got to go. Right. Yes. All right. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. Right. Bye. 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 <laughs> Oh. Like I sound amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it's quite loud. <laughs> what the hell? No, wow. Well, <laughs> yeah, that bit out. She's just joking that bit. No, no, no. I was just like, <laughs> oh, I can't say that. Can I edit that word out? Where it gets stuck into a. <laughs> 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 Cut that out. Cut that one. Oh,
Because that's